All right, team, how's it going? This is Eddie Gray. Thank you so much for being here. I am absolutely elated on every level to be able to talk to you about the big six. It does have a little cousin, the six, but this here, you've got the four mono channels. You've got a couple stereo pairs. You have 13 and 14 in which you can bring into the signal, and then 15 and 16 is reserved for summing. I definitely want to talk to you about a couple of different approaches, how to work with this unit, but more importantly, I want to talk to you about some things to look for inside of Logic Pro because there are uh, just a couple of weird kinks when it comes to Logic Pro. What specifically, you ask? Well, before I answer, you go ahead and subscribe, make sure you like the content, and let's go. All right, so the very first thing you're going to notice when I press play here is that the signal comes in into channels one and two. So let me go ahead and press play. All right, so without hearing anything yet, you can see that the signals are coming in through the stereo output one and two. Now, if I press the main button here, we will start hearing the sound. Now, this is not necessarily ideal simply because we want to spread the mix across all of the channels. I want to use the EQs, I want to use the compressors. I don't just want to be reserved to these two channels. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Logic's preferences or, or what's called the settings now. I'm going to go into audio IO assignments and send this out through 15 and 16. And so now when I press play with uh, no audio playing out, you can see that this is not being sent out yet. And it's not until I hit external two here that we see signal coming in to 15 and 16. So this is the very first part of the equation that you have to solve. All right, so the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is create a summing channel. So this would be in 15, 16. And I find that if you want to basically avoid a feedback loop, you can send this out 15 and 16 or none. And so this is just kind of a safety measure. So after you set up a safety guard there, you wanna start routing the tracks to the individual channels so you can make use of the EQ, compression, what have you. And so on the tracks themselves, I'm sending track one, which is the kick to output one. The snare is being sent to output two. Output three, a mono channel has the bass along with the rim shot on mono channel four. After that, I go into stereo pairs five and six for the drums. Extra percussion seven, eight. I've got a pluck sound here, nine and 10, and then a long sustained synth on 11 and 12. In the next session, which I'll show you here in a second, I actually send reverb through here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and press play. And you come to find that one and two is missing. And that goes back to the kink that I was referring to because inside of your preferences or what's called the settings now, you need to set up the output 15 and 16 within the IO assignments. But then on top of that, you have to set up mirroring. And so that's going to now fold this back into one and two like this. Okay, so now I am monitoring through main. I'm listening to everything. And then when I'm ready to print, I will go back into 15 and 16, but we're not there yet. Let me go ahead and take advantage of some of the coloration here. And something else to point out before I move forward is to enable the from USB buttons so that everything is being routed accordingly. All right, so let me go ahead and press play and I'm gonna start making some adjustments. So here I'm going to start utilizing channel compression.
So great unit, you can already hear some of the action. Sounds very warm, sounds very punchy. Everything that we've come to know and love about SSL. Once you get everything working the way you want it to, we can then sum all of this over to the G series bus compressor. So that alone was worth the price of admission. All right, down here I can change monitoring levels. I have a dim control. I can also fold into mono, which will allow me to just check for phase and things of that nature. All right, so now everything is being routed to the G bus and I'm ready to print my mix. I go into 15 and 16 here, record enable, and I get out of main mode in order to listen. And then once that is set up, go ahead and record. So I just want to be clear that I will be providing listening files for those of you that are interested in purchasing this unit. If you're anything like me, you do a bunch of research and you want to make sure that this is the right move for you, your studio, your family, etc., etc. So this is sounding really great. Again, download those files so you can listen back um, to the original bounce without the SSL magic. And so now I just want to show you how to route effects through the unit. Now, in order to capitalize on that, I'm going to turn on Q2 to USB 11 and 12. And so that is basically going to allow me to send whatever is on 11 and 12. In this case, I'm going to send a reverb by means of the stereo Q here, so long as I turn them on accordingly. And so one of the things that I'm just really wary of is just always turning this down to zero because you can really mess up your ears. I'm wearing headphones right now, so you definitely have to be sharp and just get used to uh, kind of moving around in a way that you really don't when you're inside of a DAW. So let me go ahead and switch sessions here. So we're inside of a new session, and the only difference here is that I've routed all of the percussion uh, together, and then within track 21, which is the auxiliary, I'm going in 11 and 12 and then out 11 and 12. And so that essentially allows me to control the volume here. But the most important part is I can add reverb to let's say the, the rim shot or the snare or what have you. So I'm gonna do that now. Now you gotta be careful because if I just solo this one, I'm not gonna hear the reverb. Okay, without the reverb, sounds like this. I'm also gonna add some reverb to the bass.
with the ability to pan channel compression bus compression this thing is an absolute monster there's a lot of things we haven't even talked about for example the ability to have parallel compression so you don't necessarily have to use the bus compressor let's say you have another unit like the bus plus you can use this in such a way where you're using stereo q1 in order to create parallel compression there's a lot to do here in fact I haven't shown you, but right underneath the Big Six, I also have the Bus Plus and a Fusion, and so I will be making content on that later, but this is such an incredible piece of technology. Um, a lot of ins and outs, so much more that you can do. Um, if you are interested, I just highly recommend that you take the time to read the manual. I think I've read it about four times now, and every time I read it, there's always just something new that pops up in there. But look, if you're liking the content, uh, make sure that you subscribe. I have a lot more stuff coming soon. I appreciate the likes, the shares. If you would like to support the channel, go ahead and check out the links in the description. That helps a ton. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to get out of here. Big Six, download the files and listen today. Take care.